man, I don't know how to feel about it. You know, the draft's coming up and family's uh, excited, you know, because my brother got drafted. So, you know, of course they gonna, they want me to be next and do the same thing. So, uh, you know, that everybody's making plans, like, uh, we're gonna have this big party, we'll do it. But I'm like, nah, I don't wanna do that. I just had a bad feeling, you know, I had a bad feeling. I don't, I don't wanna have a party. I don't wanna do nothing. So uh, going to the end of the season, uh, the bowl game, we got a big bowl game coming up against up and coming star, uh, Lamar Jackson. And Louisville, we're playing them in Nashville, Tennessee. And at the time, uh, my brother was playing for the Tennessee Titans. And uh, you know, you wanna go out with a bang, you know, this is your last, this is your last college, collegiate game. And you wanna make sure you have a good game and you wanna have a good game in front of your brother. You wanna impress him, you know, plus, you know, I just want to go out on the on the high note. But uh, we're playing Louisville in Tennessee, and uh, I have a good game. I have 100 yards and a touchdown, and uh, we lose. We lose the game. After my last game, my senior year, I immediately had to go back to College Station and have foot surgery. That was going. Um, sideline me for the combine. I didn't get to do a bunch of stuff like that. so. Me and Coach Sumlin made a deal. He was he since we had we had three of our top quarterbacks, two of our top quarterbacks transfer out, and I was gonna sit out the bowl game and get my surgery so I can be ready for the NFL combine. But Coach Sumlin made a deal with me like, hey, if you play for me, then I will move back to pro day. You know until you 100% ready because I need you, so that's what I did. I played for him, had 100 yards and a touchdown, and immediately after the bowl game, I flew back to College Station, maybe like a day later. Two days later, I had, I had toe surgery, which was a major surgery. They took bone from my ankle and put it in my big toe, because I had, uh, it was like 33% of my bone missing. So they, they did a bone graft, and uh, that sidelined me like throughout most of the, training part, you know, with leading up to to, to the to the pro day and to the combine and sideline me. So um, that was another that was one thing that kinda hurt my draft stock because I didn't get to perform against the other elite running backs at the combine. I just only thing I got to do was go that way in and bench press and do the interviews and all that, but I didn't get to perform on the field against the other top guys to show the scouts how I really matched up against them. So uh, I had a surgery, and then I fly to Florida to rehab at the uh, what I thought at the time was the best rehab facility in the country, Dr. Andrews, where a lot of guys go have the, have their surgeries and go rehab. So I go there and rehab, and uh, I'm living in Florida on the beach. You know, I can't run. I'm in the boot. My 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 toe and ankle has to heal up. So the combine come around. The day before the combine was my first day actually back running. So uh, I could run, but I wasn't, I hadn't been training, you know, I wasn't in shape to do any of the stuff. So I just went to the combine, bench pressed, did the interviews, and then I left and I went back and started training and get ready for my pro day. Everybody sees the value that Trey Carson will bring to, it, to the table. Um, a year from now, you know, he's 237 pounds, he's a different guy. A pro day is where, it's basically like a come on at your school, you know. You, you go and you run the 40, you do all the testing stuff, run the 40, bench press, shuttle, vertical jump, you know, all the testing stuff and you do position drills uh, with, the, with the NFL coach, you know, but it's, it's more of a laid back, so after my pro day, I come back to Texarkana and just uh, hanging out 
you know, and working out until the, until the draft comes. Um, out of the blue one day, I get a call from my agent, and he's telling me that, hey, you know you uh, failed the medical at the combine. I'm like, what? Like, I, I, I know I, you know, I had toe surgery and stuff like that, so I'm thinking that's what it is. But he's like, uh, now you gotta go back up there for a medical recheck. So I had to fly back to Indianapolis for a medical recheck where they saying that I had so much wear and tear on my knees that my knees were unstable. So I'm like, well, I never even hurt my knees. I never understood that. So I go back up there and they clear me or whatever. So I ask my agent, what does this really mean? He tells me that if, it, if you were a first round guy, this would probably knock you to the fourth round. So me being a third or fourth round guy, I'm thinking like, ah, in my head, I, I'm already, I'm like, okay, so this means I'm gonna be undrafted. I don't really know, because I don't know how to, I don't know how it works. So after I do the medical recheck, I come back home and I'm just like, man, I don't know how to feel about it. You know, the draft's coming up and family's uh, excited, you know, because my brother got drafted. So, you know, of course they, gonna, they want me to be next and do the same thing. So. Uh, you know, everybody's making plans, like, uh, we're gonna have this big party with the woo, but I'm like, nah, I don't wanna do that. I just had a bad feeling, you know? I had a bad feeling. I didn't, I didn't wanna have a party. I didn't wanna do nothing. So the day of the draft, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I, 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 I'm a realist, you know, the first day, I think it was only the first round. So I, I knew I wasn't gonna get drafted in the first round, so, uh, I don't even think I watched it. I watched a little bit of it, and then uh, me and some buddies went to go play basketball. Me and little Michael James, we went to go hoop and play basketball and, you know, just chill out while the draft was on. Like, we didn't, I didn't even watch the first round. And then the second day of the draft, I think it's the second and third round. I'm not sure, I can't remember. But the second day of the draft, we're watching it and watching it, and, you know, people's caught, like, my phone starts to ring. and. Uh, I think it was the New Orleans Saints called at the time. They called and they were, uh, the running back coach was like, hey man, I really like you. Uh, stay by your phone, I'm, I'm gonna try to get you, uh, and, you know. So I, I was excited about that, you know, I, I just was hyped. And then uh, all of a sudden he called back and was like, hey man, looks like you failed the medical at the combine and the GM doesn't wanna risk the money on, on, on someone who failed the medical at the combine because you're, you're like a high risk guy. So I'm like, what does that even mean? I never even got hurt. I never even hurt my knees or nothing like that in college. So, uh, yeah, that's the that's Miami what happened in the uh, second and third round. King so I'm Andre, like, man, running back, Alabama. you know, as the rounds go by and, 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 and running backs get drafted, that you know you better be in. Go, with the 171st it's just, pick in the 2016 it's you know what I mean? Draft, it's, it's one of those situations select, where you just, you don't know what's going to happen because you put all your eggs in this basket to be drafted to the NFL and it doesn't Keith look like Marshall, it's going to happen. So as the rounds back, go by, Georgia. go by and go by, I'm just sitting there watching running backs get taken and running backs I never heard of. Who is this guy? You know, I, I've never heard these guys. I, I played running back in the best conference. I had 1,100 yards in the, in the best conference against some of the best defenses, against some of the best players. So I just, I was just thinking that I was going to get drafted. I, I deserved it. That's how I felt. So the six and seven round come around, and now I'm, I'm just really emotional. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really emotional. I just can't take it no more. So, uh, you know, we had a couple of people over at the house watching it, even though I, I didn't want anybody there. But, you know, I go, family, go, they're going to, they want to come show their support. So emotionally, my, I let the, my emotions get the best of me pretty much. I, I left, I got in my car, and I drove over to my high school, Liberty Island High School, and I sat there, and I sat there, and I just looked out the windshield of my car, and I was just thinking like, man, I'm just wondering, like, like what's next? Like, if I don't get drafted to, this, to the NFL, like, I'm not going to, What's gonna happen to me? Do I do I go get a job? Like I was this big college star. Now I can't even. I didn't even get drafted to the NFL. Like am I a failure? Like what? Like what's next? And then as as, as, you, as you go undrafted and sign an undrafted free agent contract, those guys don't really make it. You know they just count bodies. So it's one of those situations where 
you go on the tour, you don't know what's gonna happen. Like, it's scary, because you put all your eggs into this basket, like, bro. And you know you're supposed to be there. You know you're better than guys that got picked, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's one, of, it's, it's a scary feeling, because you just, you don't know what's next, man. You, you, you prepared for this, you didn't prepare to go get a job. I got a college degree, but I'm not, I'm not trying to put that to use. I'm still athletic, I'm still strong, fast. I'm trying to play football, that's what I want to do. So as I was sitting there in my car thinking, I'm like, bro, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm, a, I'm fresh out of college. I don't really have any money. So I'm about to live back with my parents. Like, what, what do I have to, what am I gonna do in this situation? You know, you just come to a crossroad. You don't know what's gonna happen. I spent around five years in the NFL. Uh, first couple years with the Cincinnati Bengals, then with Green Bay, and then I ended up in Detroit. Uh, you know, going undrafted and actually making a roster, you know, being being a part of the 53-man roster that's gonna actually play, uh, that's a huge accomplishment. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people don't get to do that, especially like as a running back, you know, I, to me, it was when I got when I got, all I wanted was opportunity, you know. So I just wanted a chance to show these people that I, I really deserve to get my name called. So every chance I get, every chance I got, I, I took full advantage of it and, and made the best of it, you know. So um, I think for anybody watching this, uh, the message you can get from it does that the message that you can get from this is that hard work really does pay off if you just stick to it and. You know, stay stay the course and keep your head down and keep working. There is light at the end of the tunnel because I was undrafted, bro. Like, you know, it was over for one second. And then I just keep working and kept working. And next thing you know, I'm a starter for uh, the NFL. I'm a, a start, starting running back in the NFL. And these people trusting, trusting you to go out here to make plays and win games. So, I mean, you can do it. Like, I, <laughs> you can do it, you know, no matter what nobody say. You can do it.